Hi, it's Mike. In this video, we're going to have a look at the um, the next part of testing our more real world like scenario. So, in the, the first video, we looked at um, on this slide up here, we looked at testing the workflow that did the hard work of processing the message. But this time, we're going to look at how to test this service bus um, receiver. Now, the challenge with um, having a message sent to service bus is the trigger fires starts a workflow. How does your test know? which workflow picked the message up because you could potentially have multiple messages and things like that and that's why one of the reasons why we like to separate the workflows into the receiver and the logic um, just to make them much easier to test especially if you've got many tests and you've got um, you know different scenarios the um, the service bus one here we, we need to drop a message on the queue let the logic app pick it up, but then we need to work out which logic app did pick it up. So that's one of the challenges. Now, let's have a look um, at the receiver for a moment. So if we open this in the designer. So there was qu just a couple of steps here. We've got the, um, the trigger that receives. We've then got the call to the processor logic app, which actually goes and does the work. So there's just a few things going on here, but in our test, so again, um, just a shout out for a future video about the living document um, testing that we can do where we can generate documentation, which is what some of these lines of text are about. So the highlighted bit, check the living document video out and learn more about that. But here we're looking at this scenario, um, receiving the message. So really what we want to do here is we want to know, um, do we can we send a message to service bus and can the workflow pick it up? and start the other the other workflow of the child one. We don't really care with this particular test about all the different scenarios in that other the other workflow that it's going to call, which that separation means the testing here can be a lot simpler. So we only really need one test. So I'm going to create a message, which will be a bit like what we had in the previous um, test. And then we're going to start the logic app test manager and then send a message to service bus. Now the challenge here is we need to wait we can't just know which logic app's going to pick it up, and there might be a slight delay in picking that message up. So what we would have to do is we'd wait a short period so that the logic app picks the message up, and then I'm going to check for the most recent run of that workflow. So I tried a couple of different ways of how you could do this. So I could do things like let logic apps log to app insights and use something like a value from the message that then gets written to App Insights so that I can look which logic app it was. But the problem with that is there's just such a time delay on the message going to App Insights. It, may, it makes it really difficult to know, um, you know, just delay your test for five, six minutes till that, that um, flush of data into App Insights happens. So I'm going to do it a slightly different way here. Um, but we're going to check get the most recent run. We're then going to um, check it started running we're going to check it receive the message and then the bit I'm going to look for here is I think I've got a tracked property in the logic app um, and I'm going to check that the delivery ID matches the one the test used in the first place that'll just let me validate we've definitely got the right message and you can see I'm putting a GUID on here so that's probably a good way to try and accommodate that within your test you've got some bit of data you can just check to make sure it's right and then we're going to just check the child logic app gets called successfully. And then we'll we'll let the you know the, the child logic app tests will be in a separate test that we have in another video. Okay, so if we look um, if we look behind the scenes, what's going on here? Then so let's go right up to the top. So we've got um, you know we've talked about this step in other videos. The test manager's up and running. We've told it which workflow we're going to test. So we're creating a, an input message. So we looked at this in, in the previous video, how we passed in the spec flow table, and we just generated this XML message here to trigger the, the workflow with. But this time the key bit that's different is and instead of using the test manager to call the logic app over HTTP, we're going to drop a message on a queue. So here I've got a queue name and I've got my delivery ID, which I'd set in my um, my test context. And um, so 
Stoughton Handle Clock Scheme. I can't remember why that's even in there. I'll apologise. I don't know why that's there, but I'm sure there was a reason. Um, I'll probably come and update the comments here just to explain why it's there. I think I'm guessing it's just um, when we look up the run history, um, there's probably like a potential that there's a bit of clock skew between the build agent and my local machine when we're looking for the tests or something like that. Um, so here we've got the service bus helper. So my service bus helper is over in this little helpers um, file here. So I've got a, um, a little helper class that can send a message to the service bus using a um, using a service principle token that we can get here. So there's some settings in the app settings.json. Just note that they're not in the, the repo, the app settings.json. So you probably want to implement your own app settings because obviously they would be sensitive. But really all this is doing is sending a message to that queue. Um, and we would check that the, the task to send the message completed fine. So we're good there. And then we have to wait a short period of time. So I'm just giving it 30 seconds. Um, you may have to give it longer. This is one of the bits where I like that separation. That means all my tests don't need to do this wait period. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll check for the most recent run of a logic app. So there's a helper method on the logic app test manager that I'll say give it a start time, so that's the start time I created earlier, just before I triggered the uh, the run, or just before I popped the message on the service bus queue, I then go, right, get the most recent run since this time, and from the run I can check, did I get a run, and did I have a run ID, and that kind of thing. Um, I can use the Logic App Test Manager to load the workflow run history by passing in that run ID, so before in the test where we did it over HTTP, behind the scenes it already knows which run it's got because it triggered the logic app. But this time we didn't directly trigger the logic app, we did it indirectly via the queue. So we're using that run ID to load up the run history. We can check the, the trigger was successful, so that's good. Now the key bit, this, this next bit about the delivery ID, so if we look over here, um, I'm going to check, I think it's probably this compose shape that I've got. Uh, or is it the, the, the variable. So he, here we've got the track properties. I've saved a delivery ID track property on this variable where I've taken the, um, the value from the service bus message. So I've kind of, you know, I've created this variable here delivery ID and then I'm actually taking the output from this variable and saving it as a track property which will then go into the run history. So in the um, test here I can get my expected delivery ID from the test context and then when I look up the you know we've got this variable here so I can look up the action JSON that comes back from the run history and then I know we'd have a property called tracked properties the delivery ID and we can get that um, value so when the, the logic app runs we get the delivery ID from the run history we've got the delivery ID that we know we put on the input message and then our assertion just checks there the same and that means we know we've got the, the right run that matches the message we inputted so we, you know we know we're definitely working with the right run um, then we can Get the action status for the, the call to the child logic app check that was good and then we know our overall workflow run was good so at that point we've, we've managed to test everything on this logic app but we've managed to handle that challenge of how do i how do i get the run history for the right logic app even though we've triggered it from service bus so hopefully this technique will give you opportunities with other um other workflows where they're not triggered directly but you have to see you know you you drop a file in Dropbox that triggers a logic app, or you drop a, you know, a file in storage or something like that. You can manipulate the input. So let's say I create a file in Dropbox um, with a certain name, and then that that um, you know that has my workflow gets a file with a path, and I can check if I use the path as a track property. I can check the path matches the path that I put in in the first place. So you can kind of work around that indirection 
um, using a technique the same as what I've used with Service Bus here. So hopefully that um, gives you some good real world tips about how to make testable logic apps and still test some of those awkward scenarios.